Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. Well, the moment is here. I have received the big package from Books and today we're going to be checking out their latest new 10.3 inch tablet, the Books Tab Ultra. Now that one promises to be quite a lot uh, different than what we are actually used to from ink tablets in general and this one presents like a pivot from what an e-reader or an e-note taking device is and is kind of moving towards the realms of the regular android tablet so it's going to be interesting to actually check that out but this is going to be a bit of a longer unboxing and first impressions video simply because there are some aspects that are quite important to actually try and cover and at least check on the uh, tab ultra before the viewers actually wait for me to finish the testing period and things like that because that takes a couple of weeks because they want to spend a couple of weeks wor working with a device to see how it actually performs in real life and there's tons of tests that actually need to be done full disclosure books has sent me this review loan unit device so this unit will be with me for a couple of weeks and then i send it back so while they are kindly providing this kind of opportunity they have absolutely no say in what I say about the device as usual. So that's pretty much how that works. And before we dive into the unboxing of the Tab Ultra, I would just like to invite you to check out the My Daily Organizer at the mydeepguide.com slash shop. Support from uh, the viewers and actually purchasing of the MDO not only gives you a really, really good yearly, monthly, quarterly, weekly, daily organizer and planner for your e-note devices and any basically device that's capable of writing in a PDF and has hyperlink functionality, but it also helps My Deep Guide as a platform remain independent, helps to support the channel and platform grow even further, which is something that you'll see soon because it's still in development, but there's going to be one new test that's going to be introduced on all of these platforms to further quantify the all elusive uh, subjective and weird writing experience. And for that one, I actually had to get professional grade lab equipment, which is pricey. So the purchases of MDO directly support the further development of my deep guide as a testing platform. And now let's check out the Books Tab Ultra. All right, so the uh, review sample loan package that Books has kindly sent has arrived. And in the package, amongst other things, is the latest Tab Ultra with a ton of goodies, such as the regular cover and two versions of their, um, what's it called? The keyboard cover for Tab Ultra. Um, I think that in the information email, they said it's a standard and a special. I'm not really sure what the difference is. We'll probably see when we unpack this. But for now, let's focus first on the Tab Ultra. Now, the Books Tab Ultra is the latest 10.3 inch uh, HD Carta e ink tablet from Books. So it has the standard 1872 by 1404 at 227 ppi, so not 300. PPI, which is basically something that we're waiting from uh, Amazon Scribe that is coming out soon. But anyway, has a dual uh, color controlled front light, um, has capacitive touch, a stylus, EMR, not active one, has an updated octa-core CPU with 4 gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage, which is expandable using the micro SD card. And I think it's up to two terabytes. Tab Ultra has a rear facing 16 megapixel camera. And that one's supposed to be primarily used for scanning document, OCR recognition and things like that, which is something that uh, probably might be a useful addition for uh, plenty of users. Runs on Android 11, um, Wi-Fi, both standards. It has a Bluetooth as well. Uh, it has a USB-C with OTG storage and and external components uh, support. It has a microphone, a speaker, I think dual speakers and maybe several microphones. We'll see when we unbox. 
absolutely massive battery with 6300 milliamps um it is coming this version is in phantom black color here are the dimensions and the weight is approximately 480 grams so in short this is a super uber powered um e-ink tablet all right so let's open it up and see what we have inside And let's unveil the Tab Ultra with a sailing ship. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, that's very, very tablet feeling like. So we get the tablet. With the Tab Ultra, you get the uh, Books Pen 2 Pro, and this is a latest version, so it doesn't have different colors, and uh, users actually report that this is of a better quality or a better quality control, at least, than the previous one that I tested and that I had. So we'll see how that works. It's a 4096 pressure sensitive pen, felt tips of the normal standard, so remarkable uh, tips and other tips can actually fit this one. So they are exchangeable tips. Uh, we got a magnet here and an eraser on the back, no button. And of course you get the protective cap. This time you get the actual tool for getting probably the door for the uh, micro SD card and a nice quality USB-C to USB-A cable. And of course some supporting documentation. So it's a fairly standard package from books. You get the device, you get the pen, in this case the premium pen 2 Pro. Um, then we have the tool for accessing the micro SD card, USB-C cable, and the supporting documentation. And now finally, let's focus on the Tab Ultra. So let's slide the device out of the protective cover and let's check it out. Okay, that looks fairly fancy. Interesting. Here's the camera. Oh, okay, I don't know if it's just me or is this looking not parallel uh, probably me but i'll just measure it out this is full-on metal construction here we got glass on top it doesn't feel too paperly like you had on the note air series for example the two and the two plus so overall the design looks fairly good so we got a bit sharper edges here as you can see so it's nothing terribly sharp but you do feel it you definitely do feel it uh, when you are holding it. So this is the Lenovo, this is the Tab Ultra books. You can see that in the Tab Ultra, while the manufacturing and the milling and just the produ production of it is really, really good. There's nothing bad about it, but the design itself doesn't have a chamfered edge. Well, this one has, and you can actually even hear it with the finger going by dull sound so soft much sharper because there is a sharper edge so that's not a big thing per se but i do prefer and i think it's an important element of the ergonomy of a device especially when we're talking about 700 us dollars now just to be clear on the chamfering thing there is a chamfer they have added the chamfer that's why it's not that bad you can also see that there's a slight protrusion of that uh, uh metal in regards to this one so this the screen sinks a little bit in and the metal is a little bit on top and you do feel that tiny little edge. Again, as I said, not a big deal at all. And it's probably not going to affect anyone or a very small percentage of people, but it is an ergonomical point that I do react to. The screen itself looks nice with this image here. The clarity is quite, quite good. I think they've worked on having a different type of a surface here that doesn't feel as papery, but it actually allows for a better image clarity. I think that's one of the things that they were going for. So the important thing to actually check out here is the screen ref reflectivity. How does it perform? And these are really, really bright conditions here. And I think that it's performing really, really nicely. So I'm just gonna bring in 
the Note Air 1, right? No, sorry, Nova Air 1, which has their older, much more papery-like uh, screen protector, our screen surface that's pre-applied on top. And you can see that the reflectivity between the two is extremely similar. This is not as papery, so let's again do the audio thing. So this is Nova Air 1. Scratch test, Tab Ultra. Again, softer, a bit sharper here, and that's because the surface is different. But despite that, that change in the surface should allow for a bit better clarity of the image uh, while not compromising on the feel. All right, so that's the front. We flip it over to the back, and this is where we see the biggest difference from any other e-ink device so far, and that is the addition of a camera, a rear camera that is protruding in two steps out of the device. So while I do get it, I do get that people want their cameras for, and they can definitely be useful. My issue is that you have the camera protruding there and everything is fine, but that means that on this end, you get this kind of action going on, which is not fun. I don't know if it's an optical illusion or not, but I'm gonna get the calipers and measure this because this looks like it's not parallel. And I gotta check that out. All right, so here we are, and uh, I did the measurements, and I'm gonna try and show you what I mean. The difference is minute, but it is there. I'm gonna move my hand so that you can see. And as you can see with the calipers, I've made them here at 5.1 uh, millimeters. It's just touching this outer edge before the rounding off on the back side. However, if I just move that back to here, you can actually see that there's a small, small, but there is a difference between the distance from the plastic here and the, and the edge and the distance between the plastic and the edge here. And that difference is tiny, but I'm going to try and measure it. So here we have 5.1 millimeters and I want to make the distance to be pretty much exactly the same here. Then I am at uh, 5.46 or 48 millimeters. So we're talking about a very, very small difference, but it is there. It is 0.26, no, 0.36 of a millimeter. And some people may not notice this, but this one tipped me off immediately. Hey, this is not perfectly parallel. And here I'm going to use the same kind of approach. So this one, the lower edge is at 12.3 uh, millimeters, something like that. And if I just slide that along all the way to the upper side, you can actually see that while there's a tiny difference, but you do start to see more of the edge of the device itself. And uh, let's try and measure out that difference and see how much that is. And here, when I match the calipers to actually touch the edge, the right, right on the edge of the side, then it's at 12.46 millimeters. So that makes sense. It's a smaller, uh, it's a shorter edge. So we have a smaller type of um, uh, uh, deviation here. Yes, the, the differences are tiny. They are absolutely tiny but um for example i did notice them and it does kind of affect me so it's not a big deal at all but at 700 us dollars and when you actually start comparing this with other tablets you have to compare everything and i am kind of doing a first impression things and my first impression was uh, that doesn't look to be parallel so i wanted to measure it the camera protrusion is actually twofold. We have this plastic cover, which is at around 1.5 millimeters. And then we have another step here, which is another millimeter, one millimeter thickness also outside. So we have 1.5 and one, and together they are, of course, 2.5 millimeter protrusion from the flat back of the tab ultra so that's the camera in the upper left corner the rest of the back is fully metal simple design and very very nice kind of a uh, surface and it doesn't really slip of course you get some 
fingerprints here, but it's not too smudgy and it's a very, very nice kind of a surface. Unlike uh, the top side of the bucket design, this one is a little bit more rounded and it feels a little bit nicer and the lack of chamfering is not as prominent here simply because we don't have that edge ending here. Again, not a big deal, but covering everything that I am actually reacting to as a first impression. On the right hand side, we have this kind of a design thing. Maybe that's a magnet. Maybe that's something else. Probably. I guess that's just uh, probably going to be a powerful magnet for the cover. But the design is actually quite nice and it does look rather good. On the top you have the power button that uh, duplicates as a fingerprint reader as well. We have a microphone. I believe this would be an LED indicator and one of the two speakers. On the bottom we have the second speaker and the second microphone and this is where the micro SD card slot is and the USB-C port. You use the tool to simply slot or pop the slot out and then you slot it out and oops. And when you want to put it back, you just align it, click it and that's it. On the right hand side of the device, you don't have anything other than the indicator where the magnet for the pen is. And on the other side or the left hand side, you have the uh, data or power connector and some info about the model there. Overall, I think that the device looks really, really pretty. Um, I think that the manufacturing is really well done apart, uh, aside from that kind of lack of chamfering here and uh, lack of perfect uh, perpendicularity here. Um, I would expect at the price range for this to be absolutely perfect. So that might be just me, but yeah, that's just what my expectation is. And this kind of a bucket design here, that's not going to bother most of the people, but it is something that I personally do react to. Overall, I think that it looks really, really nice. And it does have some kind of uh, uh, heritage from the Note Air series. So that's kind of nice to see. But overall, I do prefer the Note Air series uh, design. One, two, two plus, it really doesn't matter. This is more like a standard uh, Android tablet with an e-ink screen. I like the, the dimension of the device. I think that's actually fine. And the weight, surprisingly, it doesn't feel that weighty to me. Uh, even though it is 480 grams and you definitely do uh, will feel it, it's, so it's not going to be super uh, light or anything like that, but it's uh, for a 6,300 milliamp battery, uh, it's really not that bad at all. And you can see that it's really, really nice and straight on all sides and edges. And um, yeah, those are all good things to see. Let's do the first power up. Where's the button? There's the button. E-ink center. Well, this used to be back. Now this is... Okay, so they've changed the gestures. So this is not a configuration. This is just telling you where the... So how's the back thing going to work if you have swiping pages and the floating toolbars and things? Why? 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 Why change everything again? Uh, already now I can see that the, <laughs> the display differences are definitely there because this feels super, super fast. Right out of the box, uh, they've changed everything yet again. So this is the first time that I'm seeing the OS 3.3 and now it's changed completely yet again and everything is different. So we have our notebooks, I would guess. Yes, this is going to be where the notebooks are. So the back is here. Okay. And this is the e-ink center. All right. So we have dark, dark color enhancement. App optimization is now moved here. HD balanced fast, ultra fast. Okay. And then we have more settings refresh mode settings here. Okay, so fairly intuitive. They're starting to concentrate things into one place, but I'm going to try and refrain from testing out the OS 3.3. That's going to be a separate video. So then we have our library here. Yeah, of course, I'm not turned. <laughs> Storage 107.8 gigabytes available from uh, 128 gigabytes. 
All right. And we got our settings here where, of course, nothing is done because I've just turned the whole thing on. All right. So one of the big things with the newer books devices is that they are uh, coming pre-installed and pre-certified for the Google Play Store, which is an excellent thing to see. So you don't have to go through that whole mumbo jumbo of uh, yeah dealing with the whole thing. One thing that I do like uh, from here is that I have a quick access to, I hope, my recent books and my recent notes. And this is now turning into a home page that's actually a little bit more interactive and more useful. And it's starting to remind me of the Huawei's made paper uh, uh, approach, which is something that I did like. So it's going to be interesting to see how much customization can we have? Can you maybe even have a calendar there? Because these are basically Android widgets. You have this option and a dot here. So if I swipe left, then I have a quick launcher library in store. So you have a different view. Do we have another different view? No, you have this view and then you have this view as well. All right. And then you have library in store and storage in notes. Hopefully it's possible to customize these things, but we'll see and we'll see what the search bar is actually doing and how that whole thing works out. So if I swipe down here, then we have uh, rotate options. I believe that we have an auto rotate option. So the gyro is on the tab ultra, which is a good thing. Screencast, mute, hand touch, uh, on off. Yeah, on off. Split screen, screen recording, books drop, feedback, screenshots, do not disturb, screen refresh, and location. So it looks like that the navigation ball thing is gone. You probably could install it. No, the app store is gone as well. So they will no longer have the app store either. All right, is it possible to group? Yes, you can group. So you can organize this in a nice way. That's that's actually a good thing. All right, so then we have our warm cold light and the link control here as well. All right, so despite everything being changed, the changes are not that dramatic. You still are able to find things around quite nicely. Scan documents. All right, fine. For first impressions, since it's right there, we're gonna test that as well and see how that works. But first things first, I'm really interested to see three things. First, writing. How does it write? How does it feel? How the, the new pen feels or the Pen2 Pro that comes with it feels? Then the second thing is going to be the um, A2 performance or the GPU performance when we're going to browse and scroll and maybe watch a video and see how that works. And we're going to check out uh, scanning a document quickly and see what that goes. Um, that's as deep as I'm going to go in this first impressions video. So let's start with the notes. And uh, no, I'm not going to start on the login. I'm just going to go here. Already now the navigation is quite nice and fast, um, but I'm now in the HD mode, right? So it's not in the fast mode or the ultra fast mode. So let's see uh, how does the writing feel on the tab ultra. Uh, okay, well, I didn't expect it to be this ridiculously fast because this is, uh, I am really, really, really interested to actually measure this out on Desta, uh, test and see how quick this actually is because it feels as fast, if not maybe even 
faster than Remarkable 2, which would be ridiculous because it's also fast enough, but not excluded because it does have a dedicated GPU processor to specifically speed things up for the display itself. And the hardware is more than uh, uh, good enough to actually do this. So this feels completely instantaneous. This is something that, uh, yeah, by far, this feels like the fastest uh, uh, books device that I've ever written on. Like, absolutely. So even in the large ones, the trailing is really negligible. And when you're just writing like this, it's almost, it, it just feels amazing. So that's a very big surprise. That's something that I was not expecting that <laughs> he's going to hit me with that. So I'm really curious to actually quantify it and see what the actual result gives and what the objective measurement of this and what is a subjective impression of maybe something else. As far as the writing experience goes, it is not paper-like, not at all, but it's not in the category of the, you know, horrible plastic on glass type of a feel or anything like that. Nowhere near that. So best I could actually characterize this is it feels like a slightly harder Max Lumi or a Note 5. That's how it actually feels like because that's the type of a surface there is. So with a felt nib type of a pen, um, yeah, it actually feels quite comfortable. And as you've heard, it does have a nice sound. But boy, oh boy, that speed uh, was not actually expecting it to be that fast. All right, so next thing I wanted to test out um, the, 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 the explore the, the fast mode or basically the browsing and all that kind of stuff. So, and when I tapped on the Google Play, it automatically is uh, showing an app to optimization tutorial, which is a very nice and welcome thing to actually see on the books platform that the 3.3 has brought. So that's actually good. It gives you some more information and that you actually have a tutorial. So how to optimize these things so that people are no longer completely kind of lost when dealing with all of these options, which is actually nice. All right, so I finally logged into everything. There was no need to activate anything with Google Play Store. You just simply log in, authorize, and that's it. It's automatically switched to the fast mode and the fast mode is absolutely helping a ton with the ghosting. So the speed itself is pretty much on the same, I think it's the same type of speed that you had before, but the clarity thing, I've never seen the A2 mode this clean. This is absolutely amazing. Um, I, I've never seen an e-ink screen actually perform this fast. Now I'm really curious, what does ultra fast do? <laughs> So the ultra fast degrades the resolution a little bit, but look at this. We're actually getting into the territory of smooth-ish on an e-ink platform without ghosting, destroying your whole kind of a, a, a image here that, I mean, we've never seen this before. I haven't seen this on any other device before. So that's fairly, fairly impressive. I'm just gonna keep things at uh, ultra speed. So let's see YouTube and let's just see how it all kind of works. What the hell? <laughs> you search for YouTube on Google Play and it's actually the fourth result. Oh my God, all right. So installation, let's see how it goes. It's uh, pending, installing, and we're gonna get there, I guess, soon enough. Right, so far, everything is pretty much normal. Let's do uh, another search while it's doing that. I wanna use the Edge browser. So let's do like this. Uh, yes, let's install that as well. A very responsive device, as you can see, it doesn't really have any kind of problems of any kind. And let's go back home and I should start seeing newly installed apps here. So 
what I guess he installed edge. Okay, so the edge is installed there as well. So let's optimize these. And I wanted to actually use the, um, yeah, what, what the speed will be, but I don't have that option. Huh. So this is browsing through YouTube in uh, fast mode. He automatically switched to ultra fast. So let's see, fast mode. Actually, I prefer the fast mode. It's almost as fast, but it there is definitely a difference in uh, uh, quality here. Uh, like it's much, much, much sharper than uh, than the ultra fast, which makes sense because it doesn't degrade the picture. So let's see how a video uh, kind of performs. All right, so let's check this out. Okay, that's. Oh, my name is Voya. I don't have volume control. No, stop talking. All right, that's where the volume is. All right, so it's having some issues. Definitely has some kind of things. Maybe that's with the optimization thing. And see what we get when we go to full screen mode. Auto rotation is working. Yeah, got it. So it's looking okay, but I do have this kind of weird thing. I'm guessing that's an optimization, app optimization thing. Let's go to ultra fast. And it's actually okay. It's a bit blinky. So let's go to fast. It's still a bit blinky. Let's go to HD. <laughs> and destroy it completely yes this is the hd mode and balanced and that's interesting the balanced mode is supposed to have the best kind of quality but it is still a little bit blinky all right so you can watch videos definitely you can but there's this blinkiness that's definitely kind of uh, 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 distracting me from somewhat. So, okay, but if somebody really wants to, you can actually watch video content on the Tab Ultra and the ghosting thing is much, much more improved. All right, so let's check the, um, how is the browsing experience on the Tab Ultra with the new G GPU here. So let's actually check on X. Yeah, just see how the browsing thing functions. Uh, no, I don't want to type anything. And actually that looks like the Gboard is now the new uh, uh, default system keyboard, which is actually pretty cool. So this is a really, really good. I mean, it's so much faster. It's so much easier to kind of deal with these things that it's uh, it's quite, quite lovely. I gotta say that this is really, really good. So yeah, you can definitely go this way and that way. All right. So yeah, the, the new GPU absolutely has a huge effect on the overall display experience and quality. And that's something that I think is the first time that I've actually seen a device on the e-ink screen perform in A2 mode or faster, yet be so clear and so really, really responsive. So that's something that's uh, very, very new and a very, very kind of cool thing to see and definitely places the Tab Ultra further towards uh, a tablet type of a category. Let's test out the Scan Documents app because that's going to be the uh, the camera thing. So let's use this one and go new scan document one. Okay. And uh, take a photo, ache a photo, <laughs> not take a photo. It's ache a photo. Oh, my photo aches. Edit and then generate. All right. They could actually scale this, but all right. So, okay. First, I need to take the photo. So let's ache the photo here. I guess we press the button there. Okay, go to next step. And still the UI not actually fitting. That's uh, kind of strange. So we took the photo. I can now move this out of the way. And what am I supposed to do now? I can edit. 
All right, so I can crop it. So we have a 16 by nine crop here. Okay, that's that. And then what else can I do? I can do some handwrite. So I can add a handwriting here. My hand right. Okay. All right, so you can take photos and then you can just add kind of notes, which is definitely useful. But I was hoping that there was going to be like an addition of uh, an option of maybe OCR. Ah, there we go. It is the next step. So I can go to note or to PDF or OCR. Ah, let's do OCR and see how it works. English power pogo pin. Yes, we have pogo pin. It is a pogo pin. Then we have all of this. Turn on, hold. Yep, yep. And then you can select all, copy and share, which is actually pretty cool. And you have 50 times remaining OCR today. So I guess you have 50 times to OCR for free um, uh, during a day, which is actually not bad at all. So the OCR recognition is fairly good from what I can see. It's fairly accurate, so that's pretty cool. And then you can actually use that as a text. And you can also, let's add it to a note, to a new page. Oh, come on, let me add a new page and not do it like that. I don't have to go cut and then go here and then up. Oh, Come on, where's the next page? Oh, now you have to go like this and then paste and you can add that into the notepad or into a PDF. Pretty freaking cool. I really do like this. I think it's very complete. I don't like the, the bounciness that the new camera adds, but as far as usability, yeah, I, I get it. And I think that this is a really, really good addition to a device and it makes it more usable. It's not a gimmick. It's actually a tool that you can use. All right, the first impression things and unboxing is turning out to be a mammoth long video because there's like lots of things to cover and it's an important product. So I wanted to cover a lot before I, you know, go on and do my uh, uh, long testing of a device itself. The magnet itself is really, really strong. Can you pick up this 480 gram device? Uh, no. Uh, yes. <laughs> oh my God, you can. The magnet is strong enough to carefully hold the whole device in air. That I did not expect at all. So it's a very strong magnet, but you can uh, try and place it weakly like there. So you have to kind of match that it's on the lower side here. So that's something to definitely keep in mind, but a very, very good and snappy magnet. All right, so now to wrap things up, I'm just gonna check out the covers and the keyboards, and I'm gonna try and do that quickly so that we just get a first glimpse and I'll more uh, uh, dive into those more deeply in the in-depth review. All right, so let's first check out the cover that comes for the D-Tab Ultra. Pure black, looks good, looks and feels very very nice under the hand really good feel really light and feels like an improved version of the uh, same type of uh, cover that we've had for the uh, books note air 2 plus and okay so this should be a magnetic cover so you just slot the device in and put it back there and this is really pretty and this cover actually deals with this issue completely. Flips over without any problem, auto wake up, auto sleep as well. And what I missed from the previous one was the ability to actually have it like this. And now you can actually do that. But are there magnetic things to kind of hold it in the back? No, not really. The front, does it hold here if I flip it around? Nope, it doesn't hold. That's why it still has the sticky ones. Are you kidding me? Are, are those the ones that you need to peel off and do the sticky thing? Oh man, that's weird. But okay, I, I, I get it. If they're trying to save weight, then it does kind of make sense. But on a device like this, I would expect this to be held by a magnet. And I would not want 
any kind of sticky stuff sticking onto the screen. The cover, I think it looks gorgeous. I think it feels, it's really, really good uh, quality here. And it's a very practical one. Is it ideal? No, it could actually have some improvements, but for what it is, um, just a kind of cover, flip book cover, not a protective case or anything. It doesn't really protect your device. It's just there to kind of help out with these things. And for that, I think it works good. And it really does feel very, very nice under the fingertips. And then we have, uh, I've received two of these to test out. They said one is standard, one is, I don't know, special. Um, so I have no idea. It's not really indicated anywhere, but for the purposes of just unpacking, I'm just gonna unpack them and tell you what my first impressions are. And this is like a flip book, um, cover keyboard, which is kind of more fancy, bigger. And let's see, what does it do? Okay. So it's the same really, really nice material here. Feels more exclusive, definitely. Yes, we do have a magnet, which is very nice. And here is the keyboard. It actually opens up into a keyboard that has surprising amount of travel for a thin keyboard like this. And it feels really, really good. So the device fits into here and we have these kind of strong metal edges down there. And I guess you just flip it in there and it docks automatically. And then you have your keyboards and shortcuts and uh, okay. So now I have a whole list of shortcuts and this is what it transforms into and it's actually a fairly solid thing let's put the flap back yes the magnetically holds which is great so this is a very very interesting package altogether and let's put it there and the pen goes right on top there. So this kind of setup turns it into a fairly, fairly robust workstation thing because you have your full on keyboard, which has nice kind of travel. Um, you have media shortcut keys. You have all of these kinds of things to kind of get used to. You have your pen, you have everything that you would want. So this is a very, very powerful kind of a uh, setup. So let's see how does it pack together like this and like this and yes it is heavy definitely heavy and it is quite a bit thicker because you do have a full-on keyboard um, but it is actually fairly good now what's actually quite nice is that here in here you have what feels like a metal back full-on metal back here which should protect the device from a fall because it's just magnetically held here. So first impressions here, this is actually quite impressive and quite interesting. Now it can also flip back at which point we're not kind of uh, 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 reminded it's not in a keyboard mode, even though it's really hefty um, in that option here. But I gotta say that this docking mode is so effortless and it just works really, really nice. So this I think makes sense. And this in combination with the camera and all of these things, this is starting to make sense that they are actually focusing on the Tab Ultra being a productivity tablet, a tool, a work tool that just happens to have an e-ink screen and a really, really awesome uh, writing speed and a really awesome uh, uh, GPU that's clearing up all of the ghosting and things like that. So a very surprising take on an e-ink tablet. It's a complete pivot to what anybody else is doing. And I think that it's placing Tab Ultra, my first impression at least are, is that it's placing the Tab Ultra in a category of its own, so to speak, with all of these things kind of combined. There are some things that I'm not too sure about, but I have to spend time with the device and we'll see how that actually goes. I wasn't sure what to expect from it. 
Um, but now, uh, when I see everything together, I think it's starting to make sense. We're going to see how it actually performs, how it is to actually live with, but yeah, first impressions are, uh, holy moly, this, this thing might rock quite a lot. All right, and the second uh, keyboard on the face of things looks exactly the same, but actually when you open it up, you are greeted with a big orange key, which I think is a big difference between the, the two. The other one didn't have this. So at this point, I don't know what does this key do? What's the difference? Is this the special one? Is the other one the special one or which one's which? I've uh, sent the question to them to actually ask them about that to figure that out. So we'll see. But the overall layout and the build quality and the material is identical between the two. The only thing that I can actually see is the presence of this key, and I don't know what it actually does, so we'll see what they say when they answer back. Well, all right, so the Books Tab Ultra. Definitely some surprises and a couple of things that I expected it to be. From the announcement that they've made, it made it very, very clear that this is going to be more a tablet and less of an e-reader and an e-notating taking device. And when you combine it with the keyboard and the dock, or basically as a docking station and all of these things, then it starts to make more sense. This is a more of a professional kind of device that's made for that type of setting, which is definitely makes it an interesting thing to check out. So far, it has left a fairly positive impression on me, especially the writing speed, the latency of writing was really, really impressive. I'm, I'm very curious to measure that and see what the actual speed of it is. And also the new GPU addition to this device really does make a very significant difference, not so much in speed, but in clarity and image quality and getting uh, rid of ghosting. This is the first device that I've ever seen perform, uh, have an e-ink screen perform that quickly and that clearly. So that addition definitely works. So at the very least, extremely interesting device at this time, very pricey. I think that when you actually add up the cost of the keyboard and all of these things, it's extremely pricey. You do get the Pen 2 Pro, which alone costs 80 bucks, I think. So that's also a value to kind of keep in mind. But then again, it would be nice to have an option without the pen so that you are 80 bucks cheaper, but you can't. So yeah, um, lots of testing ahead of me and I have to do these quickly because then Amazon Scribe is gonna be coming as well. So I have to kind of not let these things overlap, but yeah, I'll be testing this one and we'll see in the coming weeks an in-depth review will be coming. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell in the description below. Also check out the links to my daily organizer playlist and the mydipguide.com slash shop if you're interested to purchase the My Daily Organizer 2022 or 2023. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye.